Hey, how's it going? This is Melinda and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be showing some absolute grails that I have found at antique stores or flea markets. Just something other than your typical record stores. If you are a vinyl collector, a vinyl lover, but you're on a budget, this video is for you because it just shows, what I'm going to show here are records I found just by rolling up my sleeves, going to unusual places and finding some killer stuff. And I have found absolutely amazing things. I've got a really special one to show you towards the end. You don't want to miss it. Uh, first off, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. I would really appreciate your support. Uh, the record I'm going to show first off was one I found a couple weeks ago at an antique store. Uh, my husband and I love looking at antiques and out of the corner of my eye I saw a little grouping of records. The first one was a box set and it was Jimi Hendrix. It was 10 LP box set. They priced it at $125. They had it all taped up that, so that you couldn't even look at the condition. The box was pretty beat. When I looked at it on Discogs, it never really sold for more than $45. So I passed on that one, looked at the second one. It was your typical Frank Sinatra record that usually sells for under $10 and they wanted $30 for it. So I immediately kind of came to the conclusion that this place wanted pie in the sky prices. They were just unreasonable, but I went ahead and kept looking and the third record caught my attention. And it was a very surprising find for an antique store. It is a 2014 copy of the Beatles. It is the uh, mono press that came out and they wanted $24.99 for it. And that is what you would have paid a few years back to buy it brand new. It was opened, it was used, but in really good condition. And like I said, $24.99 when I looked it up on Discogs, uh, they are now selling for about $75 to $100. You can't find them in the record stores anymore they're almost impossible to find if you all you know if you bought the Beatles mono box set that came out several years ago my hat goes off to you you made a very wise investment I have picked up a few of these mono records as I have found them and so when I saw this it caught my eye so for $24.99 I picked it up knowing that uh, it is worth more than that I got it home and if you're uh, familiar with my channel at all, I'm a huge advocate. I really love the Giles Martin 2017 version of this album. It sounds fantastic. But when I put this one on, it blew me away too. It is incredible. There's a lot of punch to it. I just think it's a very enjoyable listen. My husband and I listen to the Giles Martin version and this one back to back. My husband gives the nod to the Giles Martin version and I I really don't know personally. I give it a draw. I think they're both incredible for different reasons. So if you see this one, it's an incredible one to have. It does sound really good. And I was thrilled to find this at an antique store. Couldn't believe it. And here is the record 180 gram vinyl on the Parlophone label. So that was absolutely thrilling. And really this one and another biggie is what inspired me to do this video. Here is one I found for $2. Patsy Klein. This is called That's How a Heartache Begins. You gotta love Patsy Klein. She's absolutely incredible. This is a very clean record. And for $2, I found a white label promo at an antique store. So I had never seen a white label promo of the DECA label. So that is what this looks like. Just really incredible. It was just a very clean record and for $2, I thought that was a really great find. This is a classic rock album that I think everybody needs in their collection. I personally love it. It is Errol Smith's Pump. It came out around the 1989 era, around when most people were buying cassettes, but to have this on vinyl, Found it on, at an antique store for $7, just a really great find. And this is one of my favorites. Obviously I love early Aerosmith, but this is a great later Aerosmith album. It has Young Lust, Love in an Elevator, Monkey on My Back. I absolutely love that song. Jamie's Got a Gun was a huge hit. The Other Side was a hit. What It Takes was amazing. I really love it. There's not a bad song on this album. I think this was just a very, great album that they made. Here is a beautiful inner sleeve. 
Everything was in really good condition. You can buy a reissue of this. They have reissued it, but not for $7. I felt like I really got a great deal to own an original. So that is another really great antique store find that I came across. Here's another one. I talked about these last week, the American Top 40s, and uh, Casey Kasem every Sunday morning did a radio program on the radio. You could listen to it. I'd come home for church and listen to the uh, countdown and uh, really love these. They would send these out to the radio stations. These are box vinyl box sets. They would play them at the radio station, send them back to the American Top 40. The American Top 40 company destroyed them. And this particular one was found at a flea market. for. Um, this is the uh, month of September, Sept uh, 17th of 1977. So that was a really cool time for music. It still has the little DJ set list on here. And you can even see if you look through here, ink marks where the DJ had went through uh, the countdown. And the number one song on this particular one was I Just Want to Be Your Everything by Andy Gibb. But there's also some really cool stuff on here like the Star Wars theme was number 10. Uh, number 8 was Telephone Line by ELO. Number 5 was Don't Stop by Fleetwood Mac. Number 4 was Handyman by James Taylor. So just a really, a lot of cool stuff. And I failed to show you all what the vinyl looks like and what the label looks like. So let me just take an opportunity to show you one of the labels for this. They're all stamped by the year. Again, this one was from September 17th of 1977. Let me straighten this up here so you can see it better. 3LP set, as uh, it went into the 80s, they became 4LP sets. And if you wanna buy one of these on eBay, you're probably looking at about $80 to $100, depending on the year. But these are really great to have. Uh, really, it's not a monetary value for me. These are a sentimental value. So I really treasure these as just a part of growing up in my childhood. Really love it. And it was great to find at an antique store. Here's another great antique store find. This is Celebration Day by Led Zeppelin. An absolutely amazing box set. Uh, they came together and did a concert back, I believe, December 10th of tw tw 2007. Yes, at the O2 Arena in London. And this has a beautiful little booklet. Each one of the members of Led Zeppelin shared their feelings about doing this again. There's some really great pictures as well. So uh, we're talking about John Paul Jones, Jimmy Page, Robert Plant and John Bonham's son Jason took over for John on the drums and I know that was a very cool way for the Led Zeppelin just to pay tribute to John is to let his son play drums on this and I know that meant a lot to Jason to get to do that. And here is just one of the record sleeves that came in here. There's three of them. There's just some really good, cool songs on here. We've got Good Times, Bad Times, Ramble On, Black Dog, uh, In My Time of Dying and For Your Life, just on this one particular uh, LP. And it's on 180 gram vinyl with matching labels. Just a really cool find for an antique store. So just very happy to be able to add that to the collection for very little money. Just an absolutely killer box set by Led Zeppelin. And then this next one is an absolute grail for just about anybody who collects vinyl, especially if you're a Beatles fan. I have shown in the past that I have run across one of these before. I've got it right up here. It is a second state butcher cover and I found it at a record store for a really cheap price. And I was able to find another one at a store that sells records, but they also rent costumes. It's an antique store. It's just a little bit of everything in there. So for me to find something like this there was mind-blowing. It is the Beatles Yesterday and Today album. It came out in 1966. The photographer Robert Whittaker, who was going to take pictures, he did take this picture, I do believe. And anyway, the Beatles were getting kind of bored with those typical photo sessions. And Robert Whittaker was a kind of a visionary and he liked to push the envelope a little bit as a photographer. So he showed up to a photo session one time with the Beatles. He brought butcher smocks, 
raw meat and plastic babies that were broken up into baby parts just something very very unusual and they had some fun and in the end here is one of the pictures that they had taken from that photo session so I thought it was always a little weird that George, he's kind of like the forgotten beetle. He's kind of in the back row alone, which I always thought was kind of weird. And they put this as the cover for yesterday and today. And it came out, there were 750,000 copies, but uh, there was an instant backlash when it came out. People were appalled, they were grossed out. It was just a very, very bad reception for it. So Capitol Records immediately recalled um, as many as they could, whatever hadn't been sold, um, they went ahead and did a recall on them and uh, they destroyed all of those except for some. Uh, there was a plant or two, a record plant or two who decided instead of destroying the album covers, they were going to take a different picture and paste it over that butcher picture. And that is what I have. So if you look um, on this one, you will see this is just one of those plain boring pictures that they really didn't care for. They covered the butcher cover with this. There wasn't a ton of those. The majority of these covers got destroyed. But the one thing you can do, a telltale sign of you having a second state butcher, you have to look carefully, but if you look right in through here, you can see that picture of, um, let me show you. This is Ringo. You can kind of see where his butcher cover goes. He's got a black turtleneck underneath it. And if you look carefully on these, you can see the black turtleneck on here. It's kind of, kind of cool. And a lot of people have removed this top cover to expose the butcher picture. And I think that's a really cool idea. This particular copy isn't in really great shape. It would probably be a good candidate to do that if you wanted to. I personally won't do that because I really like being able to look at it. You know, in, on a sunny day and you get the right lighting, lighting in here, I can even see Ringel's face and hair. So I just think it's really cool. It's like looking at a ghost. And also I've heard that these ones with the paste over still on them are getting harder to find because people are peeling them off. So these might end up being worth a little bit more money. And just a really cool find and I was thrilled to have a second copy of that. Here is the record and it's not in the best of shape, but still it's really not about the record when you find one of these. So it's a, a rainbow capital label. This is the mono copy. If you have a stereo copy, it's worth even more. I would love to find one and I have seen one before, but the price of it was like $1,300. Absolutely crazy, but you know, they're very rare, so maybe it's worth it. I wanna show this too. This was a really great record that was sent to me. I recently picked up a reissue of this. I had been wanting it on the uni label for a really long time. A couple of the records that I ran into and listened to at the record store just had too many snaps and crackles and pops. There's a lot of really cool, slow, quiet songs on here that are really beautiful. I did not want the pops to distract me. And Jeff at Various Vinyl recommended this album, the reissue. He said it sounded great. I always trust his judgment. So I did buy the reissue. And the day I put out the video showing my reissue, Marikan Lehman, um, it's her channel name, Marika Lehman. She, she sent me this incredible record and it is one on the uni label. It was a pretty cool coincidence actually. And I cleaned this one up. She gave me a beautiful copy. So this one sounds really good too. So it's really cool to have an original on the uni like I originally wanted. I really love having a reissue that is flawless too. So thank you so much, Marikan. I will leave the link below to her channel. She's a young girl with an old soul. She has all of the classics. She is a huge music enthusiast and she has a really great record collection and she shows some really great stuff on her channel every week. So please check out her channel. Also, I wanna show uh, one of my dearest friends here in the vinyl community, uh, Rod, Happy Hippie the Vinyl Guy. He was one of my very first friends that I ever made here in the vinyl community. He's a very sweet guy and he sent me some 45s for my jukebox. It's been a little while ago so I really probably need to go ahead and show them and I'm sorry it took so long, Rod. He sent me some cool stuff and these are like 90s, uh, 45s from the 90s that would be nearly impossible. 
to find. So first off is Pink Floyd's Astronomy Donomy. What a great one to have. It blew me away to have a Pink Floyd. I have a very hard time finding any 45s from Pink Floyd. I, I've seen another brick in the wall. That's usually about it. This one is Bon Jovi in these arms and Save a Prayer. So another really great 45 from the 90s. Here is Hold On My Heart by Genesis. That's a nice song. I really do like that. Just a really cool one. Scandalous by Prince. And this one even has, if you look, like really cool. And it even has the jukebox tag in here. So that was really great. Shake a Tail Feather by Tina Turner. And uh, Why Must We Wait Until Tomorrow? Or Why Must We Wait Until Tonight by Tina Turner. Very cool 45. He also gave me a version of Jump by Van Halen, my favorite. I already had a couple of those, so I went ahead and gave that one as a gift to my best friend's son. He's a 13-year-old. He loves vinyl records and had got a record player for Christmas. He's autistic, and he is the sweetest boy ever. And I know Rod, and I know his heart, and I know that he would be thrilled to know that I gave a young boy like that a really cool 45. So thank you so much, Rod, for your generosity. Thank you, Marika. Thank you all for watching my video. If you like it, please subscribe and leave your comments. I really enjoy hearing from you, and I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.